This documentary is funded by the Star Ghana Foundation with support from Media General. Child marriage, defined as marriage before attaining the legally sanctioned minimum age of 18 years, constitutes a violation of children's rights to education. In Ghana, cases of child marriage have declined. However, there's still work to be done as one in five girls are married before the age of 18. Gundok, a farming community in the Nabdan district, Upper East Reading, is battling with cases of forced marriage, teenage pregnancy, and child marriage, a situation that is impacting adversely on girl-child education. The junior high school in the community continues to record a high dropout rate among teenage girls. In November 2022, the TV3 mission team, with the support of key informants, identified four cases of teenage pregnancy and child marriage at the Gundok Junior High School. The team followed up on the story of the 15-year-old Form 2 student, Hannah, who had been forced into marriage by her biological parents. The year is not up to marriage. It's a child. You don't know what is going on. Some things, petty, petty things there on the house, he can't handle it. The way he's supposed to break himself and come up before the marriage will come, he knows it because he is the child. He don't know what is going on. We learned a lot of things there. We learned a lot of things there. That time we didn't know that if you have a child and the year is not up to marriage, you can't do it. And now when you have opened my eyes, if I will know that, I will go to Nangori and inform them what is my child. I want her to go to school. He didn't listen to me. They will help me, but in that time, I don't know. You have to report to the authorities if your father or your mother is not treating you well. But if this thing is not come, I mean, does not come to our notice, we have very little to, to, to do. But if they bring such, me having solving problems like that here, if you seek your responsibility in taking care of your daughter in school, that one, I will take you on. She was in school, yet lived in her husband's house. The man, who was already married with three children, divorced his children's mother for the teenage girl. The children and their newly found teenage mother attended the same school. If I don't get up early, I can't sweep the compound. I can't cook fast. If I don't get up early and I do that late, I can't come to school that. If I come to school late, my teachers will not leave me. Hannah's parents took cola, six bottles of locally brewed gin, six guinea fowls, and a cash amount of 300 cities as bride price. I was given for marriage at a young age. My daughter is equally young, and I don't want her to bring home teenage pregnancy. That is why I supported the move to marry her off. Hannah was unhappy and desired to run away from the man's house, but her parents were unwilling to welcome her back. Her parents' reason for not endorsing her leaving her husband's house was born out of fear and shame. Teachers of the Gundok Junior High School raised a red flag over this disturbing trend. I invited the parent to find out whether actually it was true. The parent confirmed that actually she got married, but he told the husband that he shouldn't allow her to stop schooling. We spoke to the, 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 the parent that what he did is unfair because it's not two things to worry about. How can a girl be schooling while being in the husband's house? Her teacher at the Gundog Primary School was equally not happy about the soaring cases of child marriage in the school. When the child job grew up to some level, they are they were forced for the girl to go and marry, and they will pick in the correct their cows. So some of them are very, they are having that mentality of the marriage. So he will just say, oh, let me, if I, you go and marry and I pick my cow, is that not better than for you wasting this case? 
there is no year you will not hear about two or three have married. Because of the economic situation, the child gets to a certain stage, there are younger ones, and so the 12 year old girl, the 13 year old girl, the 14 year old girl have got to fend for, her, for herself. And if she's unlucky, even fend for the younger ones. And this is where they meet unscrupulous uh, men who take advantage of this, their needs and start sexual life with them. And, and so we should be looking at a way of some form of intervention. A fortnight after Hannah's situation was telecast by TV3, officials of the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection engaged Hannah's parents and insisted that the marriage is dissolved. After you aired the program on TV, uh, in fact, it became a national issue. So um, during the holidays, I was called upon by gender ministry to um, come and assist them in during investigation. So they came and uh, I went with them to the parents. Some two representatives came from gender ministries. And then we actually met the parents. But that day, the mother wasn't around. It was the father who was there. So they interacted with the girl. And actually, she wasn't trying to, um, I mean, uh, give, ready, ready to give information. But uh, finally, we were able to get something from her. She was advised to go back to the parents. Then apart from that, um, social welfare also came in. They also called uh, myself, the parents, and the, the, the supposed husband. Then they ordered that um, the, the girl should be released when returned back to the parents. We spelled out the consequence because we told Hannah that when she goes back to the man, though there are plans to arrest the man because it's a defilement case and defilement cases are criminal cases. So we took turns to explain to her and really she understood. And with our support, it is my hope that Hannah will not go back to the man. Following the dissolution of the union, the Social Welfare Department also tacked Hannah's divorced husband to take responsibility of Hannah's antenatal care and pay 150 cities monthly stipend for her upkeep. Eventually, Hannah returned to her parents' house to complete her junior high school. Four of our girls got married, and in fact, it, it was so painful that I say I have to fight and rescue these girls. It was not easy. In fact, my life was at risk. But with the support of other stakeholders, we have been able to rescue these girls. After sitting for the 2023 Basic Education Certificate Examination, Hannah gave birth to a bouncing baby girl named after Peggy Amadonko, a journalist and a prolific author. The computerized school selection and placement system placed her to the Paga Senior High School as a day student. However, Hannah was worried about trekking for hours to attend school. Following TV3 and District Education Directorate's intervention, Hannah was admitted at the Congo Senior High School in the Napdam District as a boarding student. The way he now went to go back to the school, I want her to make seriously in the school and leave joke, and leave joke. If they want job money, if I have job money, I will help. If Sanders, I spoil, he want me to help, I will help. The mother regrets compelling her daughter into early marriage and indicated that lessons have been learned and vowed to campaign against child marriage and to promote girl-child education. Young 
no yini or cost school, no a timmy aye be beer or yea jima, nasa, the yes in the dra, no a quawa, yes, and I had now all was so, now so I call wala, yana ye grow woo, just a one timmy so be beer. If the economic situation is bad, your children should not be the pawns in the game, they should be out of the equation. They should, they should find a different way of solving the economic problems and not your girl child giving her out for marriage and uh, you take two cows or three cows for how long can this uh, can this cow take care of you you sell them uh, within a matter of a month or two uh, it's over the chiefs and people have to also take it up in their festivals meetings we need to be talking about some of these issues so that it comes out and then um, everybody picks it up. When the case comes, all here, they hear it. I told them that we didn't know that it's a big problem. So they just learn from Hannah and left their child day on the school. TV3 will continue to use media spaces to draw attention to risk factors, including poverty, lack of parental control, and social cultural practices which impact adversely on girl child education. This documentary is funded by the Star Ghana Foundation with support from Media General.